This is Sebastian Metal Martinez for MMA News here with Khalil Roundtree Jr. who faces Ion Kutalaba at UFC Copenhagen on Saturday. So, Khalil, it's a long trip for you, uh, but as you mentioned before, you're still staying warm from the Thai weather. Uh, how are you enjoying Copenhagen so far? So far, so good. Yeah, it's beautiful. People are cool. Shopping is good. Yeah, weather is cold but nice. Yeah, I enjoy it. And as I mentioned, you're you know making your way, you've been training in Thailand a lot recently, and I think that's something that many people have noticed has been paying dividends in your fighting style. A lot of people reacted to how finely tuned your Thai boxing was against um, Eric Anders. When you look at your look back at your own career and you see these difference in your striking style, how much of an impact do you feel it's made on your overall career? Thailand. Yeah, talking more time. Um, I think it's made a good impact in a way of I never really had a martial arts foundation. Um, when I first started MMA, I just went to lose weight and joined an MMA gym, and it just kind of happened that way. Um, and so I never had one discipline. Um, I've always enjoyed striking, but I never got to learn the culture and, like, like martial arts philosophy of one discipline. So going to Thailand and being able to learn that and embrace that um, has been just like kind of like a piece that I was missing inside as a mixed martial artist and a martial artist. I think um, to be able to go learn tradition and, and things like that has been, it's been really good. Yeah, it's very impactful. And is there any part of you that would be interested in competing in Muay Thai just because it seems like you've just adapted it so well to your game so far? Yeah, um, I would absolutely love to just fight Muay Thai. You know, like if if I was able to, um, you know, make a living and support my family only fighting Muay Thai, that's probably what I would be doing instead of MMA. Um, but this is what I do. This is the, you know, this is like where I'm at. This is the current situation. And so... Um, I just embrace it and do the best that I can with the tools that I have. And so you're facing a guy, Ion Kutlaba, who I guess intense, and you know he usually lives up to his nickname, the Hulk, because he does come in very hard on his opponents, especially in the opening round. Uh, that must change a little bit in training that you're dealing with someone who tends to open as intensely as he does. Mm, I don't think anything necessarily changed in training. Um, my coaches and, and myself, we know and have an idea of what I'm going to be going up against, but um, it's not like we didn't really change like too much, you know what I mean? I, I just now have a little bit of um, knowledge and expectation of like, you know, kind of what to expect, but um, yeah, it didn't, it didn't really change much, yeah. And what do you make of him as an opponent? Uh, some people feel that he fights a little bit dirty or a little bit recklessly. There are others who feel that he's just in the moment. And, you know, he's had some ups and downs, but, you know, he's won pretty big when he has, uh, when he's pulled off a victory. Overall, the, like, the simplest answer I can give you is, like, I think that it's just that it's a good matchup, for, especially for, um, for MMA fans who like to see you know, tough fights of like two like strong opponents. I think that it's just a good matchup overall. And w was this the first fight was offered to you? Because it seems like you're obviously very interested in it. Hmm. I may have gotten offered one or two other fights before, but um, the timing didn't match up because after my fight with Eric, I went home for a little bit to see my family because I'd been away for a really long time. And so I just didn't, you know, I wanted to be able to spend some quality time with my family. So the timing didn't match up. So once I told them I'll be ready around this time, then this is the opponent. And then that's how it happened. And what would you say is the key to, to defeating him? Because obviously, I mean, he has had ups and downs before, but he's not necessarily the easiest guy to tackle. So what would you say a key to victory against Kutalaba? Hmm. I don't know, I'd, if I were like coaching myself, I'd just say like, just trust myself, do my thing, you know, like, just trust my, my, my skills, my instincts and go in there and do it. And this is a, a debut event uh, in Denmark, the first one in, uh, here, and it's, you know, a big thing for the region as well. Is that something that you think about that, you know, it'll have per potentially a lot of new fans in a region that might not necessarily have been, uh, have known you before? No, never. I mean, like, maybe a little bit, but it's not something that I think about a lot. I've got a lot of crazy thoughts going on, so um, 
if it does happen afterward and people are become fans of me or things like that in this region, then that would be awesome. And if not, then nothing changes. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't make so much about you know the hype or you know the fan mentality or stuff like that necessarily. Mm, I'd have to say no. Like maybe in comparison to to others, maybe not. Um, I really just I do what I love to do, and regardless if people like it or don't, I just try to make sure that I stay happy, man. You know, like I can't really put my my self-worth or like motivation and things in in the hands of others because then it's like i don't know if i can't really trust that they'll carry me so as long as i'm as long as i'm happy and and fulfilling what i truly want to do i think it'll be i think everything will be good and if people join after then like even better and if not like i said i'm in the same boat well do you feel that perhaps too much of a deal is made with that because we see a lot of fighters I mean I think Colby Covington is perhaps the most critiqued one who really seemed to do as much as possible to cater to the fan mentality whether it's love or hate uh, and a lot of people have been critical of that, so that is saying that you know it's like a new era of a money era of a McGregor era do you think that's a bit of a problem that people are focusing too much on that stuff? Mm, I can't really call it a problem um, UFC like is a gigantic company um, they have all the tools that, you know, that they need to do whatever they want to do. You know, like it's their company. Um, they do the marketing, the promotion, you know what I mean? Like they're the ones that like that back us and push us. So I think the fans are fans of kind of like of UFC. Um, and uh, so I can't really call it like a problem. It's just kind of like it is what it is because of the like umbrella that we're under. This is just what it's come to. Um yeah, it's just like it's evolving, you know, it just and it'll probably change within the next couple of years as UFC evolves. You know what I mean? It's just we're like in an era of this is like the money era or you know what I mean? Kind of like the yeah, like the money era, the, the, the sell tickets era. But, you know, maybe maybe it'll change. Who knows? Yeah. And. So, as I mentioned before, you will potentially have some new fans who might not necessarily have heard of you before, who will perhaps will be more familiar with like, the European fighters. For those fans who will be seeing you for the first time at the Royal Arena, what do you think they should expect of your fight with Kutlava? Hmm. Um, well, my goal is just, like, good skill. Good skill, good character, and victory. So, expect that. There you have it. Good skill, good character, and victory in the bout between Khalil Roundtree Jr. and Ian Kutlaba. You, Seek Copenhagen. Thank you very much, and good luck in the fight. Thank you, man.